Hello, Herkimer County. This is Michelle Hummel with the Herkimer County Chamber of Commerce. Coming out today with, of course, our producer, Dave Warner. Oh, back to producer. I've yeah. been demoted. You're, you're bad. Oh, my God. I've been bad. <laughs> You've yes. been bad. I have been bad. I will admit to that. I'm, I'm down to producer level now. We'll see if we can get you back up to executive okay. next time All around. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> but we're both here with CEO of the YWCA of Mohawk Valley, Diane Stancato. Hello. How's Hi. everyone? Everyone's great here. Perfect. Thank you <laughs> for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I've got so many questions. So the Y, let's just jump right in. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, let's do that. The, the YWCA. So just basic question. Um, I, I see that it was originated in 1870. Did it have anything to do with the YMCA at that point? No. No, okay. No. So. YW, YW, YW. Yes. <laughs> no, so it was never a YM. No, we always have a brand issue, though, with uh, between the YM and the YW, but they are our friends. So, okay, yes. well, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, most people, uh, we're sort of the best kept secret, uh, although we are worldwide and the largest women's organization in the world. That's so, great. Uh, but it's interesting in, in our communities, people don't realize that. Mm. I think people may have a misconception without hearing this podcast that somehow you two are, you're affiliated. Right, the YW right. and the YM, it just sounds like it would be, but you're very much on your own as many women are strong enough to do. And yes. I, absolutely. We can. Yes, I love that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you're drinking our Kool-Aid. I, oh, I totally drink your Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about girl power over here. I will give you a drum roll on that. <laughs> all right, we have to practice that next time. We'll really put I, it in there well. I could t- do a rim shot if you want. So. <laughs> oh, okay, so I didn't know if you were going to give me a rim shot. So oh, I, you, oh, I, you know, I saw you were doing something over I know, there. No, I was just, I'm playing. I no. don't know what I'm anyway, doing, back know? to the reason why we're here, um, yes. Diane. I, could you tell us a little bit about the YM, or YW, I'm sorry, see, okay. the YWCA in, in what's what's going on lately? Sure. Well, the YWCA Mohawk Valley is one of 19 Ys in New York State and one of uh, over 200 Ys across the country, the U.S., um, and our mission is to eliminate racism and empower women. And we eliminate racism through empowerment of women. That's right. how we uh, that's how we explain it, uh, because that sounds like an awfully big mission, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so many whys across the country do this in different ways. Um, the way that we have focused and the need that we have um, risen to answer in our community is domestic violence, sexual violence crisis services. Mm -hmm. So that is child advocacy um, and education around those topics is really uh, where we focus our our expertise and our energy. And I I look briefly on the website, you really serve quite a number of people each year. Yes, yes. Uh, Usually um, over 50,000, between 45 and 50,000 instances of service a year in Herkimer and Oneida counties. that is amazing. That is a very large number. It is. Larger than I would have expected. Right. Yes. Yeah, but it's so it's so wonderful that you're there. So there's people to turn to. Yes, thank you. Um, I work with some amazing, amazing people uh, who do uh, boots on the ground work every single day, saving lives. And it's... Um, it's a good feeling to know that what what you do for a living um, in any given day can save someone's life. Can you give us an example of of what they do? And sure. So so if you want to talk about um, Herkimer County and our work I, here, yeah, let's sure. focus on Herkimer County. So please. Herkimer County, um, we have the Child Advocacy Center. Um, the sh- a short version is the CAC, and we're located in Ilion. And the work that we do there, we have five staff that work in that facility, and we. Um, we serve the community in um, advocating for children that have been either have severe uh, child abuse or sexual assault against children, and also all sexual assault cases in Herkimer County um, that that need, need our assistance and our advocacy. And we do that with a multidisciplinary team in this in this county. So working with law enforcement, the court systems, and other advocates from other organizations to uh, promote um, and uh, to promote the safety and the welfare of children, right? That is our moral responsibility in this world is to protect the little ones. And that's what we do. 
So if an instance happens in the law that, you know, the, the police officers need to go to a home and maybe pull a child out, are, are you one of their first calls? Yes, we're called in. Usually the children come to our, um, our Child Advocacy Center. Okay. It is designed to be a safe space for children. If you, uh, you've been there. I have, uh, yes, yeah. You've had the tour. It's a beautiful space uh, for a very dark reason, right? So, mm -hmm. but it's a beautiful space for children to come and there's toys and there's Disney Plus and um, they've been through so, so much. And our caring and kind advocates um, and therapists there work with those children um, and through law enforcement also um, to hear their stories, to do the exams if necessary um, in this really warm and safe space. And uh, so, yes, we are called in on, um, I would think, every uh, child abuse case. That is severe. So is your service 24-7? We are 24-7 operation, 365 in oh. both counties, yes. And for those of you who don't know, she uh, when Diane is mentioning Ilian, uh, they're located on West Main Street. It used to be a doctor's office years ago, and then it was a mammogram center as well on half of it. So, you know, we certainly welcome you in that space. Thank you. Yeah, We've been there uh, over five years, and we just took the other side as well mm -hmm. So because we needed more space. Um, and um, we've, we're growing in this county and doing more and more work, um, not only in the crisis um, side of things, but also in prevention education. Because how do we change this dynamic? We change it by preventing it, right? So we're really putting a focus on that um, in this next five-year chapter of our, of our work. How do you suppose uh, you'll be able to educate folks to prevent the, the abuse? So will you have seminars? Will it be you know, just a weekend retreat. How, how does that work? We actually do it with children. We teach children what a healthy relationship should look like, what, um, what it is to be in a safe environment and what isn't okay. And so going into schools and doing um, uh, anti-bullying, um, healthy relationships, don't be a bystander, all kinds of things like that. Uh, because if you think about a child in an abusive home, when you're a child, all you know is what you live, right? So right. you don't understand necessarily that that is not how everybody lives. And so when we go in, our educators are, are young and fun and warm uh, people, and they go into these schools and they talk about, you know, it's not okay for somebody to do this. And, and a lot of children then will disclose if they're in a situation um, that they need help. And maybe they won't, but... Uh, but it gives them an idea that well, maybe I ought to talk to somebody. So right. And that's, they know it's, they're not alone. Yes, they are not alone. And they feel alone, but they are not alone. Um, and, of course, you know, being in the school systems, the, you have all the mandated reporters there. So if a child does disclose, it's automatically reported and we're, we're called in anyway. But prevention education um, starts with children, but it's also talking to the community about if you see something, do something. Right, say something. A file a complaint or something, we can, um, sometimes they're unfounded, right? People are cleared, it's all fine. But if you, you might be saving the life of, ch of a child or children. And so we always encourage people to speak up. It's so important. It is, yes. So um, what what other types of things are you doing right now? So, I, well, I guess my, let's back it up a little bit. How many employees do you have to do all of this work for two counties? <laughs> Well, I'd love to have 60 or more, <laughs> but in this current environment, uh, we are down a seven to 10 staff um, just because they can't find anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're hearing that. Oh, as everywhere. The, as the executive director of the chamber, we're all crying. We need help. We need help. We need people. Um, so just around 50, under 50 right now. Uh, okay. And that's um, a lot of um, service for 50 people. When it you sure think is. It. Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, the people that we have, the staff, my coworkers, they're they're amazing um, in their dedication to helping others, and they inspire me every day to uh, talk about the why, to raise money for the why, to really get our message out there. Because every day they get up and they go and they um, they see some things that you and I probably you know c couldn't do every day, and and they're special people. And so shout out to them. Yeah, it, it, I can't even imagine. I would just be crying every day. I know yeah. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> when they tell me stories, I'm like, oh, I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. You, you, they're trained, mm -hmm. right? And they're trained, and they do. They have a lot of self care, and uh, and they 
they have um, mechanisms, um, self-care mechanisms, um, to protect their psyche, I guess, a little bit. But, mm-hmm. you know, someone else who doesn't do that work every day, it, it, to me, it's just as traumatizing to hear right. that story. I, I, I'm just broken hearted. It just makes me fierce, though, in my resolve and in my passion for this organization and the work that we do and may, making sure that we continue to move forward. Great. And I I do want to make uh, just one comment that anyone who's listening, who's wired that way, and you know, if you are, (laughs) you know, you're, you're just a compassionate person that wants to protect. And if, if you think that a job at the YWCA might be a good fit, you know, reach out. Absolutely. So th- where would they go? To- Website, w- ywcamv.org, um, or give us a call. Mm-hmm. Um, if there are, all of our, um, all of our openings are posted on our website. Okay. Yeah. I, such an opportunity for someone who's, and they're out there. I know they are. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, please come to the one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing everyone a favor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so um, speaking of uh, funding and donations, mm-hmm. you, you had mentioned donations. Where do you receive most of your donations or your, you know, your resources sure. to be able to employ these people? <laughs> we have over 30 grants. Um, we're funded through the federal government, the state, uh, county funds, uh, some city funds, uh, <coughs> private donors and foundations and corporations. So we are blessed with fantastic donors and and supporters some of which have been donating to us for years and years it's a it seems to be like a family thing um, so that's wonderful and then we do fundraisers um, right now we have the adopt a family going on and you and I were talking about it earlier it is marvelous every single family in our housing programs in our child advocacy centers um, in our shelters they're all adopted by uh, businesses, by individuals, by families that are dropping off. I can't even tell you how many things, uh, beautiful piles of gifts all wrapped oh, that's and, nice. and marked toys for the children, clothes for the women. Um, it, it's, it's really, really wonderful. And uh, floor to ceiling, it's just, it makes your heart feel really good about our community and, and, the, and the generosity in, in our community. I'm so um, excited when I walk in. It just, it just feels like a season of giving and especially Wonderful. for the kids I, it you know everyone deserves every child deserves a christmas they gift they so. do absolutely and uh we, we started i think it was last year with um gift cards for food as well and this year more than ever that's a huge need because we know what groceries are costing right. so we have people dropping off gift cards for um grocery stores uh to give to the families as well so and we also have a um an, a foundation that um as donated as well to that. So Good. we're, we're really um, able to help a lot of people. So you mentioned the counties are also helping support you. Does Herkimer County fund you in some way? Uh, Herkimer County does not fund us right now. No. Okay. No. Does Zenaida County? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. they do. Just curious. Yes. Well, if you can help me with that, that'd be cool. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Everyone knows that I'm not afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, she's a good friend to have. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, all right. So that's that's great. Um, and I know you have an event that's coming up soon. Yes. We have our largest fundraiser. All of our fundraisers, it's important for everybody to know, even though we are countrywide, even though we have 19 Ys in New York State, all of our fundraisers are for local uh, services. So all the money stays right here and serves our community. Um, so coming up, we have Salute to Outstanding Women, and that is 34 years strong. I think it might be one of the longest running fundraisers. In, yeah, in the that's area. a long time. Yes, it is. And so we have extended the deadline to nominate women, and it's for women in Oneida and Herkimer who either work or live here. Um, in any of those eight categories, which I can read off to you, um, it, we are we are receiving uh, nominations. There, it's really easy to do. It's one form. You just write a narrative about the woman and why you think that she would be a good recipient of one of these awards. Um, and two areas where we're really struggling this year is social justice and the youth category. So um, special attention on those. Okay. So, and, so what are the other categories? Sure, let me read them off. I don't want to miss any of these. <laughs> <laughs> Business and industry, education, entrepreneur, healthcare, human and public service, outstanding youth, social justice, STEAM, and that's it. 
<laughs> and there, so eight categories, 34 years strong. It is, that luncheon is so awesome. It's on March 30th. We packed the house at Hearts Hill. It's been there all these years. And um, it's all about the women. It's all about their stories. It's all about the, how they contribute to, to their community, to their workplace, you know, in, in big ways. And sometimes small ways, but very impactful ways. That's a great event. I've been to it. It's it, and when you say you pack them in, you really do. You yeah. the, when the women get up there and they start talking about what it means to them to be not to be selected, nominated, and selected. It's so inspiring. Everyone, you could hear a pin drop when those women are at the podium talking about how they got there or 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 uh, their nominator or whatever. It's really wonderful. But really, a lot of the fun I have is calling them and telling them that they've been selected. They don't believe me. <laughs> Who is this really? <laughs> or some think I'm asking for money. And then, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> they're like, we're not calling her back. Uh, but the, but the, no, the really, emo- many, many of them say to me, what, what, me? I, what? Why would somebody pick me? They're, they're just so, um, so humble and so surprised. And that, it just it makes me smile every time because I read about them. I'm like, this woman is like really awesome. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's such, it's it really a beautiful event because where else does anybody take the time to say, let's look at the women, yes. Let, you know, let's, let's celebrate them for a change. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, that day is all about, um, we celebrating women. So we had the women before the year before those eight are the judges. For the next year. Oh, okay. So the YWCA staff, we have absolutely nothing to do with the judging. We set, we schedule it all. We give all the tools and all the criteria, but the judges choose, which it keeps it really impartial. And some recuse themselves if they have you know a personal relationship with someone that's on the list or whatever. But it's really wonderful um, how the process works, and I can't take any credit for that. That was set up you know years ago by women who came before me. Great idea, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad well, you're you're keeping it moving. Thank you, mm-hmm. thank you. What do you think? So, what what else can you tell us about uh, 2023? Do you, Do you have any big initiatives? Any new initiatives coming up? Sure. Well, we are working right now. We're a lot of focus on our Amend program. It's a it's a young men's program, um, and many people say, "Well, gee, Diane, you know, you're in the girl business, the woman the woman empowerment business." But the, when you talk about um, violence against women, the end to violence against women rests with men because violence against women is primarily gender-based and it's, it's, it's at the hands of men. So there's a program that we got involved with, with the YWCA of Nashville developed it, and it is a program where we work with boys in middle and high school um, we have an, an educator who does this, and he works with clubs um, and talking to those boys about how societal norms have affected how they view relationships with women or how they treat girls or how they think about girls. And at the same time, we run a parallel program called Girl Circle, where girls are also learning about self-worth and their value and, um, and making good decisions. And so those two programs, uh, you know, as I talked about earlier, talking about education and how it can change um, the future um, uh, numbers in domestic violence, that's where we're starting and that we're having a big push on that um, in 23. St- we launched it during COVID. Mm-hmm. So it's no fun going to a club on Zoom. So, uh, yeah. so now that we can get into the schools or into after school programs, um, uh, it's been, uh, we have four or five going right now. Uh, some in, uh, in Herkimer County already. I was just going to ask. Yes. Well, I think, let me just see if I have it here. I believe I do have it here. Uh, yes, we are doing it at, uh, Jarvis Middle School. Okay. Right so, yes. That's a great time to, to get in and have kids join. They're ready to join at that point. Yeah. Middle schoolers, they're cool, you know. Yeah. Just ask them. They'll tell you they're yeah, cool. They will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, I know that our educator, he um, he just sort of lives and breathes this. It's just part of what he does, but he loves this program, too. Another good fit in your company. Oh, yeah. fabulous, yes. yes. Well, we are actually going to take a one-minute break, and we will be right back with more information from Diane Snicano. 
Stencato. Stencato. <laughs> the CEO of the YWCA. Visit My Little Falls and stay connected with the latest news, information, and events in the city and the area. Our mission is to generate interest in the community and connect residents in a more meaningful way by facilitating deeper conversations about how these stories will shape the future of the Mohawk Valley. Join thousands of weekly visitors who stay up to date with feature stories, interviews, videos, our event calendar, and print publication, the Mohawk Valley Express. It's about timely local news for the community, keeping citizens informed about important issues, telling about the people who live and work here, and giving locally owned business the opportunity to reach a very targeted audience of locals and tourists alike. It's a whole new form of media-rich content developed specifically for today's mobile lifestyle and listeners. You can download our iOS app in the iTunes store, listen to our country music streaming radio station, or sign up for a weekly newsletter. Stop by today at MyBunFalls.com. You'll be glad you did. And we're back. This is Michelle Hummel with the Herkimer County Chamber of Commerce reaching out to you on Hello Herkimer County with Diane Stancato from the YWCA. So, Diane, I know we covered a lot of material. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd love to ask the questions. How, how long have you been with the YWCA? I have been, I just said about seven years. Oh, good. With the YWCA. Congratulations. I can remember my first week thinking, oh, my God, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's been uh, it's been quite an amazing experience. I work as I talked about my staff, but I also work with an incredible board of directors who are committed to um, to the future and the and the the quality of this organization, you know, into the future. So uh, so that's um, I'm really proud to work with them. And I just want to touch that her your board members are actually spread throughout both counties as well. Absolutely, yes. And Little Falls' very own Laura Powers. Hi, Laura. I know you listen. <laughs> <laughs> is, is one of your board yes, members. Yes, she she's, is. She's fantastic. She is. Yeah. She's got a lot of energy. We're so happy to have her on our board. Great. Absolutely. Um, so are you looking to grow in any other specific direction? I know I've kind of asked you this previously, but um, in terms of like anything bigger picture, you know, are, are you looking to – I'm just – throwing this out there, you know, come up with a, a home like Evelyn's house, for example. Well, um, we know there's a, a housing crisis mm-hmm. um, in not only in our communities, but across the country, there's a housing crisis. And uh, we do housing, scattered site housing for uh, victims who are going from victim to survivor, um, whether it's a domestic violence situation or sexual assault um, and or, you know, someone leaving their 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 family uh, to get their children out of an abusive relationship uh, situation. So, um, so housing is always top priority for us. So building out our housing programs, um, not that I want to own them necessarily, but having relationships with landlords that we can um, work with and also the funding for, for paying for the rent and, and the expenses for the women and the families, at least for a year or two until they get on their feet. As you know, when people leave this, you may not know, when people leave a situation, um, an unhealthy uh, situation, um, they often leave with nothing. And so we help them start over. That's great. That what That's beautiful, to be honest, because it's, it's scary enough to leave your current situation. It's, and sometimes it's it's worth leaving with nothing it, it, yes. if it's that bad. Yes, it gets mm-hmm. that bad. But yes. for anyone listening, just you heard it right here. You you know, if, if you're in a situation, you can get out. There's help out there. Um, do what's best for you. And if leaving is the best thing, then just do it. Worry about the rest later. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to ask. Right. And um, here in Herkimer County, uh, Catholic Charities has a domestic violence program and um, they um, they also have a safe house and overflow comes over to us. Then we, we work together. So um, that, you, know, you can call their hotline, call our hotline and we'll get to uh, immediate help. So I, I'd want to go back to the funding a little bit just before we leave here. I want to just say, hey, every donation helps, right? Yes. Um, different funding sources. We talked a little bit about the county. I can't speak on their behalf, but I definitely think a conversation should take place, and I'll I'll put it right out there. So, 
Thank you. Uh, I may regret that later. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> so, proceed uh, and be bold. That's, yeah. that's right. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but for just, you know, let's say I want to donate. How do I do that? So uh, you can donate um, by going to our website, ywcamv.org. Uh, you can mail us a check. Uh, we're, we're working on getting a little QR thing that we're going to put out there everywhere. Um, and uh, keep in mind when you think about the YWCA and the reach that we have and the families and the women and the families we serve, we serve at absolutely no cost to them. We do not charge one dime for anything that we offer uh, victim services. So, or, or prevention education. There is no charge. The only two things we charge for is if we do sexual assault, uh, excuse me, sexual harassment training for businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a small fee for that. And who, who better than to do that work but right. us, right? And then uh, we have a crossroads program, which is a batter's intervention program, where it's mandated by the courts for men who have been charged with domestic violence to go through this 26-week course. We charge them. <laughs> but again, <laughs> well. who, who better uh, than, uh, than us to teach that, right? So uh, so uh, those, are the, those are the things we charge for. Um, everything else, is by the goodness of, of, of the community donations and you know, grants and that kind of funding. So, And your uh, service is invaluable. What, what you do is just amazing to me. Um, to anybody who's listening, I'm, I'm going to speak for them. Thank you. <laughs> but it, honestly, you're changing the lives. You're, you're saving children. You're saving women. It, and this, those kids are going to remember the YWCA for the rest of their lives. So I, I have a, st- a little story. Oh, I uh, would, so I, I have um, the, someone I go to for a service. Uh, I was talking with her a little bit about, you know, she said, oh, what do you do? Where do you work? What? And we just were getting to know one another. And I talked about our shelter, uh, Hall House, and in and, and, um, and our work. And she, she looked at me and she said, when I was a little girl, we lived at Hall House. Oh. And she's become a donor. It's great because she uh, she's realizes that she wanted to give back uh, to a place that helped her and her mom and her family. So uh, you uh, you just don't know the lives that you're touching and the people that you're impacting when you do this work. And that's what donors can't see. But I want them to trust. And I'm asking them to trust me that they are absolutely changing lives such a good cause. Thank you. So I want to thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for inviting uh, me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank, thank you everyone for listening and please, uh, you know, reach out to us when you get a chance. Um, if you have any questions, you can call 315-866-7820 at the chamber and we will see you next time. Thanks.